Hey guys, Daglo here with Mr. Moki Moki and, uh, fresh cakes. and Fresh Cakes. Hey boy. Um, Merry Christmas, first of all. Um, and we have a deck profile for you guys today. It's uh, it's my Yang Zing build, and I know Yang Zing has been around for for some time now, so you guys probably know what the, uh, the deck does and what it's all about. I just figured that since um, we haven't done a deck profile... And these are relatively, I guess, newer for me. We might as well showcase it. Um, so here we go. Uh, so start the deck off with three Chewin. Chewin does Chewin things. Uh, he's, he's your level one tuner. Uh, three, I feel, is definitely necessary. Some people, I've seen some people play it at two. Um, I just think three helps out a lot. Uh, so yeah, whatever, whatever. With Imperial Iron Wall, it's a lot better too. Um, three Jouto. Jouto's the main man in the deck, in my opinion. If you open up with three Jouto, you either win or you're definitely gonna fuck with your opponent quite a bit. So, um, especially opening up with three Jouto and then having the two Yangzings in hand and going for shenanigans. Um, always opening with the first turn Beals that's unaffected by traps and is a 3500 beater is always awesome, especially if you're going first, cause, just because it's like, hey, nice to meet you, here you go. Uh, so three Jouto are really good. Um, I play three Bixie, another kind of controversial card, uh, mainly because of the fact that traps aren't too mainstream in decks right now. Um, but I, I think that Bixie is still really good, especially for quick synchro plays, mainly because you can make eights super easily. Um, and uh, for those decks that do play a heavy trap game, um, he helps out a lot, especially when you open first time with Beals. Um, then your other three would be Triple Swanee. Swanee just turns your monsters into powerful assholes, um, and nobody hates powerful assholes more than everyone. I don't know what I'm going with that. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, Suwani, Suwani's, especially if you're going for a quick 8, uh, Suwani's great for that shit. So, uh, and I'm sure I don't have to explain the fact that the, once they get destroyed, you special summon another one, and those that have the attack, you special summon one in defense, and the ones that have defense, you special summon uh what a Yang Zing in attack. Example, Suwani's a 1900 attack. He gets destroyed. You friggin' special summon uh, a Bixie because you have to special summon in defense. Uh, and if Bixie is destroyed because it's defense, uh, you special summon like a Suwani in attack because Suwani. Yeah, you get you get the you get the picture. Um, triple buy-in. Uh, I don't really find myself using buy-in too much, but then again, I have a different type of playing style than most people. I like to go for ace mainly because they're a lot easier in this deck, um, especially with the fact that Swanee can turn them big. Uh, but buy-in would be the guy that stops them from getting destroyed by battle, uh, so he's pretty legit, so I play him at three. Um, the next up, um, another controversial card, actually, uh, Pulau. Pulau will be the guy that stops them from being uh, destroyed by by spells. Uh, and actually, I've seen I've seen a couple decks play Pulau at three, but a lot most people will generally play Pulau at one. Um, and again, some people play them too. So I would actually say that Pulau is probably the most controversial card, uh, especially because of the fact that there's a lot more decks that will have a heavier spell game than a trap game. So uh, definitely having a, a synchro monster that's immune to spells is a little bit more relevant than having a monster that's immune by traps. But I play double Pulau, he, he helps out a lot. Um, Tao Tui. Uh, Tao Tui doesn't really do that much, um, other than the fact that he's a 2200 beater, but he's also a 5, so if you happen to have a Chuan already on the field, and uh, you go Jouto, or you just want something a little bit more than... Uh, then an 8, like you can do Trish with Tao Tui as well, um, he's always there, but honestly he's just a beat stick in my opinion. Um, the last two would be the Zephras, 
so these two guys. Um, so this guy here, I actually like him a lot. He You special summon him, and then he turns another Yangzing into a tuner. So if you wanted a Jiao, if you wanted a Jiao To, um, and then you bring this guy out uh, with this other guy, you could go for shenanigans. I don't, really, I don't really care. Do whatever you want. I'm just saying that they're fucking good. Uh, you definitely don't want to draw into these guys, though. If you draw into them, that's actually the worst feeling in the world. Like, I, I think I'd much rather be HIV positive than draw into those guys. Like, it's it's that bad. It's that bad. Like, I'm, I'm over-exaggerating, but just by a little. Just by a little. So, but... <laughs> yeah. Lose those guys. Um, two tech cards. I see a lot of these side, but I main them. Maxi. Uh, I just like Maxi. Other people will side it out for whatever, for like effect bailers, which is a, actually not a bad card to side it out for. Um, but my personal playing style, I just like Maxis because I like drawing. And this deck could be a little bit faster, so that's why I like it. Speaking of fast, um, triple Yangzing path moving on into the spells. Uh, triple Yangzing Path, basically your kind of smaller pot of avarice in a sense. You um, target three Yangzings in your graveyard, you recycle them, you draw two. It's great, especially the fact that you, if you end up uh, drawing into this and you have a Jiaoto, you can just go Jiaoto, do your shenanigans, Yangzing Path, and then just recycle that. Uh, those uh, synchro monsters, so it's actually fantastic. I love the card. Something tells me it might get hit though. Maybe. Uh, I play double MST. I play double MST mainly because pendulums are a problem right now, and that's really the only thing that we have. Well, one of the only things that we have to to really solve them immediately, and then we're getting. Uh, what's the fucking card we're getting? Twin oh, Cyclone? Twin Twister. Twin Twister. So, those will definitely come out for Twin Twister when we get it, but it'll probably be secret, so they're probably not coming out. Um, double Dark Hole. I play Double Dark Hole, uh, and one thing that you'll find me not maining is a Regeki, uh, mainly because of the fact that you don't, it's not hinderous to you destroying your own monsters because you can get their card effects off. Um, then again, Regeki is still uber great, um, but I mean, for me, I just don't have the room in the deck right now unless you want to take out an MST, but if you're not playing two, in my opinion, you might as well not be playing any. Um, onto traps, Triple Yang's in creation, uh, great trap card. Uh, it, it'll actually bait out a lot of shit too. A lot of your opponents won't want you to get your Yang's in creations off, so if you happen to chain it with... Uh, the destruction of your monster, they'll MST quickly, so it's um, it's actually great, especially if you're looking to uh, use your other traps, which my build tends to be a little bit more trap heavy than uh, than spell heavy. Uh, two lose one turn. Uh, so lose one turn, it's fantastic in this deck, especially for those of you that play Yang Zings and use the lose one turn combinations. Fantastic. And uh, two Imperial Iron Wall. Uh, Imperial Iron Wall is making its way back into the main deck, I, I find. Um, especially with the fact that you can utilize Chewin a lot more. Um, so for decks that like to banish shit, um, Imperial Iron Wall is there to, to stop that stuff. Um, but also Chewin's effect, which uh, if he's special summoned when your Yangzing is destroyed, uh, you can sp special summon Chu in, um, but when you when he leaves the field, he's banished, so he won't be banished thanks to Imperial Iron Wall. So that is fantastic as well. And then uh, just one of uh, one skill drain, one emptiness, one warning, one torrential. I did play two torrential again because of the fact that if you end up blowing up your own monsters, it's not bad for you because you get those effects off, but. Um, just for space, like if anything, I would take out Torrential for Regeki, but um, that's really up. That's really up to the player. Uh, I just kind of like destroying my own monsters, getting the effects off, and then destroying my opponent's monsters as well. I'm a capitalist. What can I say?
um, onto the side deck. Side deck is side decks are interesting because they're they're really personal preference. So do whatever the fuck you want, but this is what I'm doing. Uh, so I play one book. Um, don't really play it too much, but it's there. I might take it out for something. We'll see. Uh, there's the Regeki, great card. Um, anti magic arrows, uh, bottomless, double breakthrough, double fiendish, one compulse, double mirror force, double call, and another uh, Zephyr Anu. Um, that's the side deck. Nothing really to say too much about it. Um, I will. I will end up siding in Mirror Forces, Fiendish Chains and Breakthroughs a lot, um, Anti-Magic Heroes here and there depending on what decks you're playing. Uh, onto the extra deck, I'll uh, we'll start it off with Tatsunoko, um, Herald, Armades, Horus, Red Wyvern, um, then going into No Thung, uh, Yazi. Black Rose, Clear Wing, Omega, Beals, uh, two Baxia, one Chao Fang, and one Trish. And another thing, again, with Yang Zing, you guys probably know, is that you can actually synchro on your opponent's turn, uh, which is something I should definitely do more of. It's just something that slips my mind, um, but that's obviously a huge misplay on my end. Um, but it's always fun to go Black Rose on your opponent's turn, which is mainly what why Black Rose is in there. But that's pretty much the deck. It's a kind of a quicker explanation here, mainly because Yang Sings have been out for quite a while. You know what they do, you know what their weakness is, you know what the pros and cons are. But that's pretty much it. Goodbye!